Is it early or is late night? We at the after party, so don't act brand new. You could call me in the morning. You might catch me rolling with my West End crew. And you gon' wanna match my high. You be catching feelings, I can see it in your eyes. Got three bad bitches right by my side. You can tell me shit, I'm gonna enjoy this ride. Handy in my cup, I don't give a fuck, I'm tryna feel right. Hey y'all, it's Lana Moore here. I'm back with another video. Yes, I have on the same outfit. And if you watch Lizzie McGuire, I'm an outfit repeater. And you're an outfit remember. <laughs> so yes, um, I'm back with another video. And this week's video is going to be pretty much um, how to move up in Amazon. Like a lot of people want to know probably, well, we hear all this stuff. Well, how do you move up? Like how can you literally move up or in Amazon pretty much? So I talked about the pros and the cons, and I've talked about part-time versus full-time, and I'm going to pretty much tell you how you can move up. I don't know what order these videos are going to go in, so if they seem all choppy, just know I'm not putting them in no particular order. So how do you pretty much move up in Amazon? There are key roles into moving up in Amazon when you're a tier one, and here's how you do it. So there are things called a process guide, a problem solver, and a learning ambassador, okay? So those are like your prelude to getting into like a tier three role. It looks good when you have one of those three things on your resume, especially if you're not go coming in as an external hire. It's a little different when you're coming in externally, but if you're trying to internally move up, like let's say you started with the company as a tier one and you're like interested in moving up to a tier three, then next to a level four, a good thing that's on your resume to have is a PG, which is a process guide. And I'll explain to you a little bit what they are, a uh, problem solver and a learning investor. We're gonna start off with process guide, which is what actually I've done a little bit of each role to be honest with you so I've done a little bit of each role I just didn't put the problem solver on my role because I didn't do much of it <laughs> um, I taught it so that's all that matters so process guide so pretty much a process guide is a process assistance assistant <laughs> you're like what they're an assistant to the manager how do they get an assistant so pretty much they are mold it into what a PA tasks consist of and what PAs pretty much have to do. Um, they pretty much do those PA tasks. So pretty much if that PA decides to take a whole week's vacation, their PG should be able to fill their process guide, which is PG for short, should be able to fill into their role when they're gone. And pretty much by them being in that role, that looks good because if the manager's there, they can pretty much see what the PG's doing and then consider them for that next role. Like, yes, this person is ready to fill those shoes, like be in a process assistant role. So that's pretty much what the process guide does. They help with laboring, labor management, like placing associates where they have to go, looking at numbers, looking at data, looking at everything, pretty much what the PA's role consists of, that's what the process guide does. Um, some people are process guides for three months, some are process guides for longer, depending on um, how long it takes for the those positions to open up, because sometimes when you're in positions like tier three roles, um, a lot of people kind of get comfortable in these roles. I'll be honest with you, like when you're in a tier three role, some people do get comfortable and are PAs um, pretty much for three years or two years or, you know, four years, you know, it just depends. And there's nothing wrong with that because, you know, some people like to get more experience in whatever that role is. The next is a problem solver. So pretty much a problem solver is like, I wouldn't say a key role in the building, but it's a key role in the building. <laughs> Um, a problem solver pretty much, it says in its name, a problem solver. <laughs> um, so pretty much they are correcting any issues or problems that may come up online in operation. So if an associate is on the line, depending on the building, it could be a fulfillment center, an IXD center, a sort center. Um, if it's in a sort center, you're probably pretty much correcting um, miss something miss what is it miss ships there you go miss ships you're probably correcting labels correcting like wrong address 
labels or cleaning up spills. Um, at a fulfillment center, you're pretty much re-figuring out the same thing like customer orders, um, customer um, things that customers have ordered, and vice versa. And I think in a fulfill in an IXD, you're looking at things that a another Amazon ordered. So pretty much, you're like you're learning a lot of problems that um, that you can pretty much fix. Um, and a lot of people depend on the problem solver depending on the department you're in to help fix those problems so if there's like a barcode that's not working a problem solver can pretty much reprint a barcode um if there's anything fraud related a problem solver can pretty much report that right so it's just basically they are literally there to solve the problems and it looks good because a lot of computer complex skills skill set to have and it looks good when you are moving up in roles such as quality so they do have a department that focus strictly on quality so if you're a problem solver and that's something that's usually your pathway so a PG's guide I would say a PG your their guide is pretty much their roadmap I would say to moving up it's pretty much your process guide then you go to a PA ideally is how it should work that's not always the case because there are the last category I'm talking about, which is learning investor. Um, sometimes they get into PA roles and I'll get to that in a minute. Then if you're a problem solver, eventually you'll move into quality pretty much into that department. Um, you'll move up to that. That'll be your next step, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you can be in a PG role and get promoted to a manager or a PA, um, depending on what your path in Amazon is. The last way you can move up is a learning ambassador a learning which is my department learning i'm a learning trainer so and yes i was an ambassador <laughs> so i know what i'm talking about um you can always start off there too you become a learning ambassador um of course with all these roles i will be honest with you you have to be a hard worker and you have to get picked that's the only downfall um, not anybody could just be a process guide. Not everybody could just be a problem solver. They have to pick you based off of your rates, pretty much how hard you work, because they obviously want someone that's dependable. They want someone who has a good rapport, um, someone that pretty much has good attendance. A lot of people get picked for these roles based off their attendance, based off their work level, like their worth ethic. Um, pretty much their work in general like they're a hard worker they make the rate that they're supposed to make pretty much that is required of them and sometimes they go beyond that so that's pretty much what you need you get picked in these roles and the last one a learning ambassador you're pretty much picked like amongst the other ones and this is the most important role like yes a process guide is important yes a problem solver is important but a learning ambassador is probably the most important at this point um, because you literally are the face and the brand of Amazon pretty much being a learning ambassador you literally have a vest you are a person that stands out and your vest says learning ambassador on the back pretty much and you literally stand out problem solvers don't stand out process guides don't stand out unless they are ambassador that is a process guide but pretty much the learning ambassador role is you teach all the new hires you're literally the face and the person that molds these new people that are coming in to Amazon and you make their day one experience pretty much and ideally the next path from a learning ambassador should be a learning trainer but sometimes that doesn't happen sometimes ambassadors promote to PA and or promote to an L4 a manager role just depending on um, the path they're planning on going to so I say this to say all that <laughs> um, each of these roles like I said you have to be picked for them and then another thing no matter what role you're in you can become either a PA or a, tra a learning trainer which are both tier 3 roles and I will get into that too if you want a video um, of a process assistant versus learning trainer let me know because they're both tier three roles and I think people tend to realize, they don't realize my role is the same as a PA until I actually have to explain them. But if you wanna know, let me know. And then, yeah, that's pretty much how you can move up. Those are the three roles you can get into to move up with Amazon. A process guide, a problem solver, and a learning ambassador. And honestly, whichever path you get into, you can promote to PA, you can promote to 
a learning trainer it just depends on what path and amazon you would like to take um and eventually with those tier three roles of course you can move up to level four roles so you don't have to be a tier three for a long time you don't have to be a tier one for a long time there's ways to move up you just have to pretty much make a name for yourself and that's pretty much it like i said if you have any questions please leave them down below and i will talk to you all in the next one toodles I wish I could stay